Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Katya, uh, Katya Patekhina, and I am running as independent uh, candidate for local office. I've been to Canada uh, since 2006 and relocated to Williams Lake in the year of 2014 with my family and continued serving our community in the role of uh, employment counselor and immigration and settlement navigator. So through my role, I've been giving uh, back to the community uh, I would say on a smaller scope, uh, helping them getting back to work and uh, bringing their loved ones from overseas uh, in the role of immigration and settlement navigator. Besides that, I've been serving in various roles such as political journal manager, um, landlord because I have real estate investment done, um, and community support worker when I used to work with First Nations in Sugarcane. Uh, working with elders. We've done amazing uh, projects together. And uh, serving in these roles uh, helped me to understand, uh, firstly to see and understand problems each person is facing. Um, another interesting role uh, is a small business owner. I used to run my own immigration consultant company and uh, I know how not it easy it is and how small businesses can make, uh, if flourishing, how they make our small community different. Uh, so my main platform, without going into details, is the platform done by each community member. I call it small community platform brought to Victoria. Working for government-funded programs for many, many years, uh, I've seen uh, many good steps done by our government, but yet, working in a small community scope, I've noticed that small community needs have been underestimated and overlooked by the government. So, uh, because I am not part of the government, I think small businesses and industries have the best answer and they can make a point of how to get people to work and how to flourish. Now it is the time for us to tell to the government what we need rather than government telling what our needs are. Another part I would, uh, important part, part I would notice uh, is uh, that small businesses, medium businesses, they have been overregulated. So imposing, imposing on small businesses and other size businesses, different regulations uh, slaps their hands and stops them from flourishing as well. Um, I would say taxes reduction for, for self-employment people and small businesses will help creating different in, in incentives. And um, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure small business owners, after they lost many, many, many employees during this pandemic, they would know that the straight answers to these questions and the independent can take these answers to the government and make it work. So once again, I would put this question back to the community. As a small community, which consists of micro communities, uh, which have not been outreached, I think we, this is the time when we need to get together and compile a list of our needs, uh, which are related directly to a hard and a soft in infrastructures. So uh, if this question is testing my knowledge about what the issues are, uh, I would pinpoint the following, the following issues which really needs to be addressed. Let us speak about uh, Highway 97 corridor. I think it needs to be extended to four lanes, starting from Kasha Creek and taking all the way to Prince George. This corridor will help um, uh, to transport food, local food, and deliver to small communities. The big issue for uh, in out west, per what I heard by speaking with First Nations communities, is lack of internet and reliable connection. It's not only have, uh, being in touch with our smaller communities, but it is a huge important role for their safety. Because, for example, during the fires back in 2017, that's what we learned, how struggled 
this, how, uh, how tough it was for these communities. These are two small, uh, uh, small they are large pinpoints, but uh, small in terms of, I made it short. Um, speaking about soft in infrastructure, um, educational programs, Having um, stayed uh, in Williams Lake since 2014 um, and being mother of two students um, and speaking with the rest of the parents of these communities and seeing kids um, sometimes doing, uh, have limited opportunities, we are lacking good educational programs to deliver to our kids. And kids given proper high quality education they will bring amazing ideas on board and they will build our future let's speak about parks they are very important um, to the health of our society to bring tourism and um, just to make our community more beautiful i think we also need to bring uh, more museums Let's speak about First Nations communities. They have a lot to show. And um, why don't we build beautiful museums with different beautiful outfits and he to bring history. Um, that was actually one of my dreams, to build a museum on sugarcane, <laughs> where the, which would reflect the traditions of their nation. And that would complement and bring more tourists to our region. So speaking about ALR, um, uh, government of British Columbia, they, they introduced restriction of building second dwelling on ALR land. Uh, I understand their point that they want to preserve their lands for its original purpose. Where the government was coming from is uh, they were trying to reduce the abuse to, which took place in Richmond, where huge blue, blueberry farms have been converted and in a huge, like, huge mansions have been built there. But yet that's where the independent voice can kick in because that's where the government should have had consultation with a small community who are short of housing and having another dwelling, small dwelling on ALR land can provide another residence for the person who lacks housing. That's where um, government have, having bigger plans, they would need to have consultation with the smaller community and yet not limiting smaller community to a certain political party box. Once again, um, I do understand uh, where our government was coming from um, uh, during pandemic. Uh, they were trying to protect all of us. But sometimes uh, with overprotection comes the huge gap when uh, many things are being overlooked. That probably, and that affected tourism tourism and hospitality, they have amazing minds. The reason why, because these people have been working in this field for many, many, many years. They know what they want and what they need. They have been already cautious about safeties, uh, safety procedures and how they serve um, our tourists properly. So that's that's where I've seen the government should have been in consultation with the tourist industry before they would introduce certain measures. So basically that's where a dependent would have stepped in to speak on the behalf of uh, tourism and hospitality. So once again, this is the time for people from this field to come to a table and list the number of the issues, concerns and needs, and then as independent, I can take it to a government. So the bottom line of this question that is, um, is that we have to create uh, the value added production in this region. It doesn't make sense to do the logging and send it off and then 
uh, wood products are being produced somewhere else and then we buy these products back. It all comes down to how sustainable we are. We need to use our uh, wood, pro wood, uh, wood raw material in a smart way by uh, supporting manufacturing of different wood products locally. Uh, that, that comes down to, um, to any topic we are speaking about. It's agriculture, making local food, making local goods, uh, making local everything which brings, which would in an optimal world make our community self-sustainable and self-sufficient and flourishing. Important issue about in forestry in this topic is how uh, forest management. That's where probably uh, forest consulting companies can step in. Uh, we still have not, uh, if, I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, we still have not dealt with uh, uh, post fires forest, which has not been managed uh, to a full capacity. Uh, we would need to utilize this forest. Um, converting them into a pellets or to some other products which can be utilized by local people. Um, replanting trees is a very important one uh, topic. We have to replant the trees uh, and we have to salvage and conserve old forests, old trees, converting probably to parks. Um, speak about 100 old or seven or 200 old tree, I think it's like a arti huge artifact which has to be saved rather than harvested. Um, gazing, uh, gazing uh, which means that um, gazing space will provide uh, fire smart, um, fire smart for our communities. Another good idea would be uh, house owners and residents, they need to have some sort of incentive to incentives by from government or other resources to do fire smart on their property. Again, how I know it costs, uh, I live on an acreage and we have api farm and it cost us $11,000 uh, to remove the forest in order to protect neighboring properties and we didn't get uh, reimbursed, which is fine, we can afford, but not everybody can afford it. Um, so yeah, these are the main topics.